Why is that not a requirement? All these mass murders, not not this weekend, but have been because people have picked up kids and grabbed stuff off of counters, off of the uh, anywhere. So the best way to get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to. Anyway, I. Uh, um, anyway, to go after ISIS and prevent. It's re 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 emergence in, in both. Anyway, our kids are going to be, and our grandkids are going to be. Anyway. And by the way, the program is still there. Go to, anyway. 2, 10, 12, 15. Hope oh, stepping on them. There's a, it's black. Anyway. All right, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in a limited capacity because we'll be gone again uh, for the new year, but then we'll be back right after that. Welcome to the show. My name is Wayne Dupree. Let me introduce you to the Godfather Conservative Radio, Miss Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. Just hope everybody had a, a wonderful Christmas uh, holiday, and we'll drive on from there. And Mr. J.R. Robinson. Hey, 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 happy, uh, shoot, it's already Wednesday, guys. Where the heck is this week going? Thanks for tuning in, folks. Make sure to give us a like, comment, and share. <laughs> so the algorithm. You ever got a haircut since last year, man? <laughs> oh, I almost got the Santa beard going. I'm going to go for a haircut in a week or two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then look, look, yesterday, yesterday, Jason, um, Jason was like, yeah, man, man, this week thing, I mean, this, this, uh, these few days, boy, I need a deed. Yeah, I can see, boy, you, you've been outside cutting lumber, huh? You, oh, yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> the wife and I had the first quiet day yesterday. She was off of work. We were doing year end business stuff. Oh, I was great. Cool. And you yeah. unplugged from politics. For a few days, then you plug back in and you realize, oh my god, this is all just so stupid. Let me ask you, uh, let me ask you something because I was talking with Drew Berkowitz from um, uh, from um, Red Voice, mm, Red Real Voice, Lord. yeah, Red Voice. And I was talking to him today and got a question for both of y'all. I'm gonna get your take on it because um, I told him, I was like, man, if things don't turn around next year after election, I'm done, man. I did. I, I told him I'm done. Uh, but we, me and my daughter had a little disagreement about Palestine. This oh, boy. Yeah, I know. It, it got her. It got her. But um, my question to you is this. And for everybody that's watching out here right now, and I want to get your honest take. You know how we talk about Palestine and Israel? Well, Palestine. Uh, um, how they've been fighting over that land for Centuries, basically. Yep. Centuries, really. Well, and they still keep doing it today, right? Isn't that the same thing with the Democrat and the Republicans? It's a little different. It's a little more uh more serious. And I think I think where people get it wrong is yeah, people have been at war against Israel for hundreds of years. Egyptians, Syrians, Jordanians, Lebanese, Lebanese. There's no such thing as Palestinians. Those are Egyptians, Jordanians, and Lebanese nomads that are kicked out of their own country, that their own country won't take in. And they voted for the violence they committed on October 7th. They elected that. Jay? Well, I, I, I was going to say, Hutch is spot on. I mean, Palestine is a made-up, nation so it, it's not like there were native palestinians for thousands of years but all of this traces back in my opinion to just a religious content or conflict between the arabs and the jews and in most of the world in america people don't understand that where in a lot of nations they they've conquered each other for centuries in europe and over in the middle east you know arabs and jews have been fighting for thousands of years 
It's it's not really fair to say Arabs and Jews, right? Muslim Muslim Arabs Muslims, and Jews, right? Because there's Christian Arabs, right? In every one of those countries except Iraq, they're all gone from Iraq now. Fact check true, yeah. So I mean, you you take a religious holy war that's been going on since before, you know, as as soon as they established their faith, and it just continues on to this day. And it's it's unfair the way it's portrayed too, because you've got two quote unquote religions. You've got one that's hell bent on violence and extermination. You've got the other one that's about apologizing and, you know, sin, uh, forgiving you for your sins and things like that. And they continually go into peace processes and cease fires. And it's a broken record. A couple of years go by and boom, here come the missiles again. And it's a shame because the Western nations are the ones funding all this. Right. Well, but, and, and thank you for that side. But I'm talking about the constant ever fight between oh. both sides. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's going to be an end to it. There is no end until one side completely eliminates the other. Okay, now bring that to where I'm talking about and Democrats and Republicans over here. It doesn't seem like there's an end to it, right? Or what? The same end as as Israel. It's not going to end until either the right destroys the left or the left takes over the whole country. Can you see? Can you see the left taking over the entire country? Yes, they're pretty you close can. now. Yeah, they're damn near there now. Can you see the right taking over the whole country? No. I think maybe in its current construct, no. But I think at some point in time, the American people do the right thing. You know, maybe not the, the right left political thing, but th this can't stand. If if we sit here and re-educate our people about our constitutional liberties, the mm -hmm. left loses. I mean, look at what they're doing right now, man, with this thing with Trump and with, and with MTG getting swatted. I mean, these things are fundamentally un-American. Well, what you need to think about, too, is on the left, they've demonized the right or conservatives or freedom-loving people as evil. We, are, we aren't we are just bad political takes or, or we're unkind. We are threats to democracy. We are, Trump is not a bad guy who's going to do bad things. He's a dictator. That, that rhetoric has ramped up so much over the past four, five, six years. We're almost to an inflection point. People believe it. And fundamentally on the right, we we fall and we want basic ideals. We want government to provide guardrails for us to go be successful in the world. On the left, they want government to provide their structure of living. I mean, that's why how many states are passing something as simple as paying for school lunches? I mean, that shouldn't be a government responsibility. You're a parent. Make a sandwich for your kid, that's you true. know, and, and now they're testing UBI. They're doing a test in St. Paul, universal basic income, and they're rolling it out in a few more states. Canada, too. Canada's doing that, too. 2000 yeah. bucks. And, I mean, you think how far we are. If you add up all the taxes you pay, uh, about 50% of your income minimum goes to some tax of some sort that just gets eaten up by the bureaucrat bureaucratic state. So you, you look at what the Democrats are doing to us right now. They're doing the same thing to us that the Nazis did to the Jews in the 1930s. They're right. demonizing us and they're blaming us for all their problems. I mean, if, if you look at uh, what's that guy, Chris Matthews came mm. out this weekend and he's furious with rural yeah. Americans. He's furious with people in the country says it's like fighting terrorists. See, and another question to you both then. Um, <laughs> if if we see what the left is doing, and, and I know, I know, I know the easiest thing is to say uniparty, but if the left, I mean, if we are telling Americans what the left is doing and Americans are seeing what the left is doing, why is there no strong effort to stop it? We talk about it. And I, I mean, and I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the people that are in the position to really 
stop it. Now, again, I understand Uniparty, but we also have people out there on our side that's not in the Uniparty. Okay? So is Uniparty that strong that we can't defeat it? Or, or is it just our lip service, people on our side giving lip service and getting rich off of talking about what the left is trying to do? Because from many people that we have seen uh, on, um, probably on TikTok, probably on Instagram, probably on Facebook, probably even on, on Twitter, they will tell you what the left is doing, how they're doing it, why they're doing it, how they keep on doing it. They will, and, and or um, how bad we are, how crazy we are, how how ignorant or idiotic we are. But our side doesn't seem to have that strength to stop it. You know what I'm saying, Jay? Yeah, I was gonna say I I was describing to my wife this weekend that this reminds me of the movie Braveheart. Where okay. all Mel, all William Wallace wanted to do was go be out in the woods, raising his family, having like his Patriot farm, <laughs> and and that's conservatives. We don't want to get mucked up in government or policies or politics. We really don't, and we we don't want much. We just want the freedom to go about and do our life, practice our faith, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, until it comes to our doorstep. Mm -hmm we conservatives don't react and you know you get people that start talking about it and, and yes. more people are vocal about it but the average conservative out there isn't going to be mobilized until it hits until there's that defining event that hits their thing and even people on the left until they don't have enough food you know, they're not going to realize how catastrophic all their decisions are. But on the right, until till something happens, and I think we could see that something in the next 12 months between now and the next election, it's going to wake, it's going to mobilize conservatives, which is the last thing the left wants. All your MAGA folks out there, when they wake up and actually mobilize to do things, they thought January 6th was bad. I mean, here's I can't even imagine. But here's the thing, Hutch. Um uh, if you aren't wake now, I mean, with with everything being as bad as it is, I mean, you talk to well, you see the people in your neighborhood, you see the you see uh um, thing um, signs, or you talk to individuals, and they seem to be waking up, but they don't seem to be putting anything in place. So stop it. We can't I mean somewhere along the line, it seems like somebody said that we can complain our way to victory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's not how it goes because when you look at the other side, and I'm not saying that they're the winning side, but they're doing a money fun job. Uh when you see the other side and you, you see what they're doing, they're not yeah, well, they are complaining, but they're putting some some foot on that gas. To destroy whatever we don't like or 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 our our way of life, the people that you talk to in your neighborhood or, or the people that you see in your neighborhood, you've said that you've seen some craziness, but have you talked to people that seem like they're changing? And but I, I is that it? Are they just changing, or are they doing something after they change? I think one of the problems that we have is that. Um, and Angel Fleming used to say this a lot, that good times create soft men. Right. And, and I think what we've got now is we've got a mm. whole lot of people trying to pretend that this isn't going on, that our, that our border's not being invaded, that our money's not being destroyed, that our children's sexuality is being stolen from them. You know, I, I think there's a lot of, this is a lot to take, you know, and, and I think it takes people like us and the people that are in our circles uh, to face these things. And I think most people just aren't facing them. I mean, if you look at uh, a normal non-political person, you know, they're watching drama shows and they, they, they don't even care about this stuff because it's not in their neighborhood yet. Now you talk to the people in Chicago or the people in New York, 
and they're raising up because it's right in their face, you know, but you, you got to look at what, at, at what these people are and what they're doing. A guy named David Ploof, who is one of Clinton's big time people and Obama's big time people behind the scenes tweeted. And I don't know what date this was. It was several years ago. It's not enough to simply beat Trump. He must be destroyed thoroughly. His kind must not rise again. They're telling you what they're going to do. This weekend, Hakeem Jeffries came out and tweeted, we will never yield our democracy to the MAGA extremists who want to take it away. These people are going to do everything they can to steal it all. And I hope we have enough uh, gumption to get in the way. I do. You know, it, it, it's a cry and shame. The biggest disappointment to all this is our our institutions that are are designed to stop this stuff. You right. know, our Department of Justice, our judiciary, right. our military, our law enforcement, they're all corrupt. Well, and yeah. what Hutch referred to, the quote Angel was talking about, there was a post-apocalyptic novel that talked about kind of the cycle of humanity. And it's strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create bad times. Bad times create strong men. And yep. we're just coming around that circle where weak men have made bad times. And until things get bad enough, strong men will rise back up and make good times again, but it's going to be painful. I mean, this border thing, I mean, they're talking about 8 million people since Biden became president and you extrapolate that over the last 15 years. What is it? 40, 50 million. You know, I mean, you just, you just, made, me, you just made me think of something when you said that. Uh, look at the vitriol against MAGA and against Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a strong man. Yep. Yeah, yeah and, and look at what they're yeah. doing to anybody that supports Trump. They're trying to decimate his business. They're trying to throw him in jail. I mean, we've got so far beyond the, the norms that mm -hmm. the left at some point is going to do something that's going to mobilize everybody. It almost happened on January 6th where – you know, if we ever get to the bottom of what happened, there's actually real invest, real investigation of what happened. But, you know, and now this, you know, you see the mayor of Chicago, the mayor of New York on TV talking about the border. Oh, the federal government needs and to I fund this. Yeah. And yeah. then this weekend, I saw some great Fox clips where they were interviewing people and they, they said, well, yeah, Joe Biden owes us money. Like, here's my map. They told us to come here. So he <laughs> needs to send us. To the town, and then they even—I mean—they're real clear about it. Yeah, we're going to come here and work for a few years, then go home. And yeah. so it's yeah. not like they're even like, "Hey, I want to be part of America." No, they're they just don't. coming here. No, yeah, they're opportunists, right? You know what? I'm glad. I'm glad you said um, about the uh, about the work because um, I think I think I have a I think I have a clip here border crossers are being given court dates in 2031. What are they supposed to do here for seven years? Again, that's a better question put to the uh, DHS. I'm not in a position to, to talk about specific cases like that. You know what? I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of the people getting behind that podium. And when they ask a question, they punt it off to somebody that's not there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's like you're part of the administration. You're part of the cabinet meetings that the people go to. So you have to hear what we're talking about. He's a three-star admiral. Yeah. You know, the guy sits there the other day. He says that we didn't leave any equipment behind in, or in Afghanistan. Oh, man. Right. Patently false. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. The, the, the amount of, there's no integrity of these people. I know <laughs> what it is. I know what it is. They're, they're all gay. That's what it is. I mean, that's why they got, that's why this LBGTQ EIEIO thing is out there. So when we find out, we'll think it's normal. Right. <laughs> but they're all making tapes in the Senate. Oh, uh, you know it, man. You know Lindsay and Barack. You know. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You sitting know that was a tree. thing. That was a Lindsay thing. Barack sitting in a tree, K I S S I N G. Um, but I mean, for, I mean, to learn that they have court cases in 2031. <laughs> It's Border crossers are being given court dates in 2031. What are they supposed to do here for seven years? Again, that's a better question put to uh, DHS. I'm not in a position to steal. Just go steal. Steal. That's crazy. 
in in Chicago. They're getting nine thousand dollars a month, I think. And it's uh, cold out there. It's cold. <laughs> did you see? They are suffering. Yes, they're suffering. They should they suffer. are suffering. Somebody yeah. told me the other day. Somebody told me, "Hey, man, don't blame the immigrants. It's not their fault." Hold on, man. Hold on. <laughs> they know they're cre- they're 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 doing a crime. Oh, they know it. They, they didn't study it. up and learn English before they got here. Yeah, they know it. They don't give a damn about me or my country or my nope. street or my kids. Nope. I hate them. Well, and if you want to take it a step further, let's say they're working. Let's just put that potential in there. So the government encourages them to come here. The government gives them money, gives them a court date, you know, however many years out that they may or may not attend. Who benefits from that? We always say follow the money. The 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 rich, the companies, the people who are hiring these folks to be their housekeeper, their gardener, or they ought to all go to jail. Right. I mean, because Americans aren't going to take a lot of the jobs theoretically that these migrants will. We've talked about until on the they, show until they get hungry. Until they yeah, get yeah, hungry. Right. Yeah, but they're getting I'm, free money from the government. So yeah. they want the Mexican roofers. They want you know, these folks to go perform the labor that your Starbucks barista is not going to go do. So <laughs> here is a, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> no, um, I was watching, um, I was looking at the immigration thing that was coming off. I was playing the immigration. Uh, did you see them coming under the wall? Oh yeah. Coming okay. under the wall. I mean, I understand tunnels. I mean, El Chapo to, they ain't even building tunnels. They're just building. I mean, it's like they put a bridge underneath that. One day you're gonna wake up and turn the television on. And there's gonna be a Mexican bulldozer just bulldozing the thing down, <laughs> right? And there'll be some music in the background. It'll be playing like cucaracha or something. Oh, and it'll just. Dun, dun, you know, here's what's funny da, 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 da. though. Here's what's funny. It's not even how they come in. To be honest, it doesn't matter if they come under the fence or if they come through the gate. The problem is once they get here, we give them money, we put them up in a hotel, we fly them first class, we we do all these things for them, and then they, instead of the stay in Mexico policy that Trump had, where you can't come in until your asylum claim is processed, they just come in and they have a six, seven, eight, ten year court date, and then that's when they do something about it. So in at that point, then when by the time they get to their court date. They've already been here a decade, you know, yeah, and now no, all of a sudden we're talking. And about then there's all well, kind of rules. Now. Yeah, then there's rules of all. He's a citizen now. He's a member, yeah, of, his exactly. yeah. He's a yeah. member of his church. He's yeah. a dreamer. You know, well, how, you know, how many kids did they have when they were here? You know, and those long, are all anchor babies. How long do you have to be here to be a naturalized citizen and take that test? Seven years, right? Who knows? I don't know. I don't even think there is any rules anymore. I'd yeah. have to look it up. Yeah, I think yeah, so. but but I mean, all. But my point is, it's not how they're getting in; it's the fact that we're letting them stay here while we're processing this, right? And we're not right. removing them. I mean, it's right. virtually impossible for them to get removed from the country. No, it isn't. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It, that's that's what people think. That's why I asked right, 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 a couple right. weeks ago. I asked you. I asked you guys a couple weeks ago. You think we'll ever get rid of these people? And you both said no. And that's the end of America. Right. Right. We got we got to change people's minds on that. Yeah. Right, but that's what I'm saying. You if you're asking me will our government ever move to do it? The answer is no. Well, forget the go- with the people that are in there right. No, wait a minute. Hutch. <laughs> I, this this is what I meant earlier. This is what I meant when I said earlier. At some point in time to save this nation, the majority of our people have to see what's right. Yep. What's proper. And getting rid of those people is freaking proper. But but then you also have to go to where we are today in the mindset of the people that are out there. They're too sensitive on things I, that, I that really matter. So, I mean, it's and and OK, fine, fine. Uh, some people are waking up for the majority of people to wake up. They're not going to it won't be overnight. Well, so it's going to take a while for a whole lot of these people to be unsensitized. Uh, when all this stuff starts hitting their uh, um, um, kitchen tables, like y'all said, food, uh, jobs, schools, and stuff like that, vaccination you know? deaths, that too. I think that there's too. a lot of different things that are converging at the same time. Um, 
I've never seen anything like this uh, rejection of the Democrat voter base. When you see as many people, and I'm not talking about the Trump campaign or all that, that they used to say, uh, oh, blacks are changing for Trump and Mexicans right, are right. Cha- Hispanics are changing for Trump. It's much deeper this time. And this time they're in, they're in the hood, man. I'm talking about the illegal invaders. Where else are they going to go? That's where yeah. all immigrants go. Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, if you talk about how this ends, I think one of the, the more wild predictions that I can see happening is I see a couple states seeding from the union. I see I the think, people being the engine, not the government. I think the right. government is going to be the loser in all this. Yep. I think the government is going, if you look at, at like uh, the three of us, you look at us and you look at our analysis of Ukraine, right? And you look at the CIA and all the agencies that are involved in that kind of thing. They're still thinking like it's the 90s, man. I don't, I don't want to talk They're, about that CIA thing um, a little bit more going into next year, too, because um, I think that there has been a psyop, and I know that our side has, I mean, and I've said it over and over again, our side talks about the FBI, like the FBI um, controls all our stuff, and the CIA is, is responsible for information, misinformation. I mean, and they do it um, from some of the videos that I watched this morning. They do it from other countries to feed into the United States. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's okay. compl- they, they're that, running the whole world. Yeah, exactly. That's nuts for that to happen. And if that is allowed to happen, then a whole lot of the thinking, you know, with the television programming, a whole lot of thinking that we think and stuff like that, they can miss to us too, conservative oh, sure. side. They can make us think certain things about certain things Absolutely. based on um, the movies that are coming out, you know, uh, and yes, yes, I, yes, I have been watching them too, but the movies that are coming out, the TV shows that are coming out, all this stuff residual, I mean, uh, resides in people's minds and, and it's like, uh, I mean, you don't know who to trust in your neighborhood. You don't know who to trust in the government. Trust, you don't trust know who your to gut. trust. Trust yeah. your gut. We need to start trusting our gut yeah. because we used to do that a long time ago. We don't do that, that m- too much anymore. Let, let me just go over the dynamic of the CIA and the FBI real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm watching a, a show and I'm, I'm trying to save her. I got two episodes left. What is it? It's, it's called the, uh, the Godfather of Harlem. All right. And it's Ma- Malcolm, Malcolm X, Malcolm X and things like that. Yeah. And the CIA and the FBI. And it's, there's this encounter where somebody gets killed because of what the FBI did. And the, the CIA guy goes to the FBI guy and the CIA guy says, you know, you guys used to be the big fish on the block. And then president Truman created the CIA. Now let me tell you where your standing is FBI right now. You get to go to the attorney general. If he'll answer your call. I'm the CIA. I call the president and he takes my call if he's taking a shit. Yeah. And I was like, oh. yeah. yeah. That's the real deal right there. Yeah. And that's and 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 honestly, go ahead, Jay. I was gonna say the way I, I conceptualize it myself, the CIA runs the disinformation campaigns, and the FBI is their enforcement arm. I've no, always said that. That's not true though. The enforcement, the enforcement arm of the CIA is the United States military. Right. The FBI and the CIA are enemies. But who? But who is the enforcement arm outside of the U.S. military? Who is the enforcement arm of the DOJ and the FBI? Okay. Okay. So, but and state um, police and local police and judges. Right. Right. And we also saw the FBI down in Mar-a-Lago, but. When I say that the FBI is the enforcer type, because well, that's their old role. Well, no, no, that's their new role. That's the role that they're put into where they are right now. They didn't. They used to be the investigative type more so often than the enforcer type. They became the enforcer type with powers after nine eleven, right? 
where well, and I think they enforce by blackmail and that sort of stuff, which is we, their game. Yeah. CIA does that too, though. Well, no, I mean, CIA, the CIA does I that. Think is more I CIA, will, CIA will kill you with a drone, though. Right. Oh, I'll blow your whole quick. house up. <laughs> real quick before we bring on our um, young brother from the new federal state of China. My son showed me. <laughs> And when I get the video, I'll show it probably in the new year. We are really heading in some real bad times. You know, we have drones. You know, they have drones out there. And the drones are flying over and and and, and dropping bombs now. First, it used to be uh, um, surveillance. Now they're dropping bombs. Okay. My son showed me a video last week. That's Jay. <laughs> is this guy sitting in the chair with his VR and he is and he has his controls in his hand and he's making the drone robot do exactly what he wants him to do and I said wait until the police get that oh. wait until the police get that then they don't need they don't need to bust down anybody's door with those big batarams and whatnot. All they need to do is send those robots into the houses, into the what you call it, and you. I mean, um, there was a a message about Tesla. Uh, one of the robots killed the guy. Almost damn near killed the guy, or yeah. or, or did they kill the guy? Did I kill him? I know he was critically injured. I didn't hear if. If he ended up passing, they have them in the back. <laughs> that, Jesus, let me let me bring on our young brother. We're not going to keep him on too long because what's up, big man? How, How you doing? doing? I'm okay. I'm just uh, got sick uh, after I came back from Arizona. But look, uh, it was, I feel amazing. Uh, just come back again. How are you guys? Well look, well, look, I'm glad to see you, man. I mean. When I heard that you had taken ill a little bit, we wanted to get you on here and get you off real fast to make. I mean, but you know, we just want to talk to you and see how you were doing and see how the new federal state of China, um, how everything appeared, uh, how everything worked out for you in um, Arizona, the contacts and different things like that. Because you know, um, from the time that we have been working with you to where you are right now. It seems like y'all have immensely grown, and with that, with that growth, your um, uh, you're a whole lot more stronger mentally. It seems too, um, uh, and um, y'all are y'all are really making a huge, huge footprint in people's yeah, First of all, I, I want to say we can never achieve that without uh, you guys, uh, oh, because. Man. Been, we've been together for for uh, almost, I think, a year or less than a oh, year, maybe Mark, ten yeah, months. Mark, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, and um, like I said, you guys became uh, super famous among our supporters, and <laughs> everyone loves you. And no, for real, like you, you're, you're real. You're very authentic. You're, and also you're very supportive. So first of all, I think this is also uh, what <clears throat> Miles might want to say is that like thanks for your support. And uh, your support, and also the support you mentioned, uh, people, folks in Arizona, in um, during the uh, whole event, um, mm -hmm. there are like over ten thousand American patriots, wow. and they've been very uh, friendly, they've mm -hmm. been very supportive, and all, most of all, like they understand our messages, yes. and yeah. this give us a, a huge uh, confidence and determination uh, for continuing doing what we do. Uh, because uh, what we do is uh, risky, especially like the people, the folks inside the party, like working covertly in China, in the inside the party, delivering all these messages. Later, we I want to uh, re-emphasize the um, the pieces of intelligence we exposed um, in the event. Uh, this uh, the, the whole the reaction and the the vibes really gave us really boost us like our our, in, our confidence a lot. Um, and also with your help and also with um, a lot of other people who've been, we, we've done some uh, interviews during the event and also we've mm -hmm. done uh, like 335 interviews on site. Wow. And also we've done uh, several, several um, very important interviews at the TPUSA actually interviewed our chairman, um, David, 
and also uh, we had two speeches on stage. Yeah, uh, hold which, on, hold on. Let me break that down because I saw your speech. I saw your speech. All right, you are a powerhouse, Roy. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if anybody else is, but well, I, damn, I was so proud to see you and 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 Ayla up there. Both of y'all got your point across, and you and 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 I'm sure that those people were like, well, I didn't know all the stuff that they were talking about. Yeah, but your commitment to 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 bringing that truth across. Y'all look good up there, okay? Y'all look good up there, and I hope that y'all get a whole lot more speaking engagements too um, out there. Just be careful. But, I mean, I hope that y'all get a whole lot more speaking engagements. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, like, I think the whole experience was amazing. Like, before, prior to the speech, I was, I was super nervous. <laughs> and not just because it was the first time I was on stage, but also because of the weight of the, the intelligence, right? Like, like I said, those information, people risk their lives and their families' lives. Uh, if they got caught, they're definitely gonna be, you know, disappeared or executed or whatever. So um, I understand the weight of it. Uh, I don't want to like miss anything or you know lo lose any information or, or, or data or whatever. But uh, luckily, um, I, I made it, and also <laughs> Ayla made it, and we I think we made an impact. And most important, we want to let American people know for our speeches is that. Uh, we are not just there to chant slogans, just to say take down the CCP or whatever. First of all, we're providing intelligence to to, to uh, American people, and we're inviting American people to witness the validity of the intelligence through time, just like what we've been doing for the past uh, almost a year, um, to to see like if we are real, if we have the real stuff, right? And uh, and secondly, like we have. Um, we have the past, we have the message, like how are we gonna take down the CCP? We're not asking American people to give us money to uh, ha have American people's children to die for our wars or our revolutions. We simply ask American people to decouple from the devil. And then uh, we will take care of the CCP like what we've been talking about all the time on when pre uh, podcast. So, and then this time I feel the American people, the audience, their reactions, through their reactions, through their uh, our communications, I feel they they now they truly understand that taking down the CCP is not it's not just a foreign affair, it's not just a dream, it's it, it's real, and we can we can do it with American people, the Chinese people, all the deplorables. We join together, we can we can definitely do it uh, in let a me, very fast fashion. And it's very you, simple. Roy, let me give you a little bit of a hint of how successful you are. And first, let me just say like about your speech and things. Um, don't completely overthink it. Sometimes perfection is the enemy of success. You know, so you've, you've got a, a righteous message. We were talking about this before uh, you came on, you know, at some point people have to see what's right. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious to most Americans that the NFSC is right. And the Chinese communists are wrong. Is wrong. Uh, so you, you've got the truth on your side, which is one of the best things to have. The the, the left never has that. Uh, and, and I just wanted you to wanted you to realize that one of the one of the keys to success uh, in America, anyway, not just here, but this is one of the things here. You added something to the lexicon. Nobody used to say CCP. No. Nope. Before nope. these these right. days, that was you guys. Yeah. And everybody's saying it now. Yeah, that's a that's a big mark, Roy. Congratulations. And yep. I'm also sure that you have twice as many airbuds now as you did before you went to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I still remember last time, like it was, when we were on, like we had t t technical difficulties and uh, really, <laughs> yeah. Been there, I done it. For yeah, 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 yeah. We've been there. Yeah. For those who haven't checked it out, go on the NFSC. Uh, Twitter page or whatever account you follow him on and you scroll down a little ways and you'll see Roy's speech. And it was, I was oh, yeah. so proud watching it because I too. remember when he was just this like wet behind yep. the ears kid yep. who was yep. showing up on the podcast and he was yep. nervous because he had a little bit of a following yep. and he was on stage in front of a large crowd yes. at the largest yep. conservative gathering for yep. months addressing talking about the mission of i was i was like a proud pop I'm with like, force so too j rob to right with force he i mean he was like yeah blah, blah. i was like that's it that's what yeah 
<laughs> he killed it. So congratulations <laughs> to you and the NFSC. And and like like the guy said, I think the the branding that you've done delineating the Chinese people from the Chinese Communist Party has been really crucial. It's good to see you guys get get ac- accolades and followers and and whatnot to hear that message. So, but my question is, what do we got to look out for in the new year? Because it looks like it's a powder keg over in China right now. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jay. Uh, I think this this is a very important question to ask. I mean, now it seems like if we look at the history, like our the era we're living right now, it's it's very extremely similar to the era prior to World War II. Right. And this is yeah, also true. this is Miles' warning, this is Miles' opinion on the era we're living right now. It's uh, the, the war is imminent. The world war is imminent. And, you know, um, all the preparation CCP has been doing is for the warfare against the West and the United States. Right? If you look at World War II now, I mean, Iran is the, is, is the Japan in World War II. Right. Russia is Italy. CCP is in Nazi Germany. And um, they've already formed this uh, new acts of evil alliance. And if you look at what Nazis have been doing, like a Nazi spying operation between uh, before uh, World War II against the West and the West's appeasement uh, policy, um, and also the crazy 90% of this uh, disarmament. Uh, and uh, later, like um, Hitler just broke the Treaty of Versailles because he, he felt like he, he could literally take over the world. And also, if you look at the end of the World War II, we're only like several months before Hitler could, you know, use the nuclear weapon against the West, mm-hmm. right? And um, and now, like, CCP is doing the same thing, and CCP is in utilizing, taking advantage of the inconsistency of the policies, right? The rivals between between two parties and, you know, give give a huge opportunity to CCP. And CCP is infiltration into uh, almost every aspect in the United States. So this is a real danger. So, uh, and also I mentioned in uh, my speak, that um, the new Federal State of China has been providing crucial intelligence on all these fronts for the past eight years, right? Miles first came out actually uh, in 2015, not 2017, 2017, that's the moment when he decided to go public and then uh, do live streams and, and directly uh, convey all these messages on live stream. But actually starting from 2015, that now it's been eight years. And as said, the, the, the U.S. government and the authorities should have been disclosing all this information, but they failed. Why? Because of CCP's infiltration again. So uh, now we we have to like use our um, popular populist movement and all the American people to bring their, to to uh, raise their awareness and ask them to join us um, and to uh, actually have a, have an impact on decision makers to decouple. So we started this decoupling movement. So I think this is the most crucial thing um, he- heading towards New Year, heading towards 2024. I think that's going to be the uh, most critical year um, uh, in history. So uh, the decoupling movement, we got to decouple technologically uh, and financially with the Chinese Communist Party. Before um, before I let you go, because they, um, my friends Roy is under the weather, and um, I didn't want to hold him too long, but um, I I did see something that kind of uh, um, troubled me a little bit last night. Uh, Xi, or I guess representatives from his office, have said that um, they're going after Taiwan. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, I know we've been talking about hearing it, but they literally said. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, and the way that they kind of, and I'm paraphrasing, is basically it's nothing y'all really can do. I mean, it's it's when we want it to happen, it's going to happen, but it's really nothing. Now, if we decoupled from the CCP before that happened, do you think that they would still go after Taiwan? Well, first of all, this this is a very good question. Actually, Xi Jinping, his personality, his uh, like the the history, the family history, like his father, he being uh, like a princeling children of uh, you know the old you know CCP kleptocrats and uh, leader, and he had this distorted uh, personality where he he want, he just had this personal ambition of taking over the world and taking over Taiwan and 
having a war with Taiwan, that's the first step of controlling Taiwan's trade and controlling Asia, right? We talked about this before. Once you control uh, Taiwan's trade, like then South, South Korea, China Japan, Sea, all these yeah. countries gonna be kowtowing to to the CCP, <clears throat> and um, and now if you look at all these um, all the plants, all the military installations, all the deterrents, and all these stuff, like it's dependent on actually Western technology and funds. Without technology and funds, she could never had a chance to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at the um, the revelation we brought uh, during the uh, AMFAS event, like we had five pieces of intelligence. First, the CCP has already finished building 11 P3 labs in Middle East, in Africa, in South, uh, South America. And the, the technology is the money is from the United States. We talk about it. The Fauci gave the Fauci, general yeah. function uh, yeah. technology to the general director of uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology. And second, CCP's military installation it, it deployed uh, over 3,500 3, ballistic missile D, uh, DF-10 series, and also over 20 um, nuclear ICBMs, which can uh, uh, reach uh, United States. And who gave them the money? Who, who's funding them? Who's doing business <clears throat> with the CCP so that they can build so many, such a huge arsenal outside China, right, in the Middle East? Uh, and also, like, CCP has been building troops Right? He's building a, an, an army of mercenaries, like 20,000 mercenaries and a, another 20,000 ready to, to be deployed. And each of those mercenaries being paid for $10,000 a month right, and by the CCP uh, in the Middle East. They are ready to join Hamas. Remember, they're join, ready to join Hamas directly and fight uh, Israel um, and our allies. And also, Ayla talked about the uh, spying operations around, or if you look at the, the map, all these spying operations, mm. all these deals are around the United States, Honduras, mm. Venezuela, uh, Dominica, uh, Cuba, Brazil, Argentina. We're talking about those countries. And also CCP, uh, finally, uh, they, they're, um, building those, they're, they're building those nuclear uh, weapons and uh, capability, those capabilities and under the guise of civilian uh, projects, just don't like Hamas did. Right? Don't forget the hotels. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And the CCP has been doing this for a year. Why? Because, like I said, like American, American people's pension funds, educational funds, savings, 401ks, those, the, the money are being invested until now, as we speak, are invested in Communist China. And the, and the total number is $7 trillion. And they're never going to return those money. They're never going to uh, pay it back with interest. Xi Jinping is ready for war. So they're using those money, uh, using uh, American people's money, using your money to fund uh, those military installations and, and, and spying operations and giving those money directly to terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah. That's why it's so critical to stop giving them our technology and, and, and money um, to build uh, our, to, to, to facilitate, to fund our biggest enemy in this century. Uh, before I let you out, I want to give you the last, uh, the last, uh, the last word going, going out for 2023 to our audience. Uh, and, um, uh, we look forward to seeing you in 2024. We want you to get better too, but, um, I'm going to let you have the floor and, uh, we wish you well, and we wish the whole family over there at the new federal state of China well. Tell them that we're praying for them, and we hope to, and we're, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing them in the new year. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Jay, Koch, and Wayne. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Thanks, Ray. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. That is our little, that's our younger brother, uh, Mr. Roy Guo of the New Federal State of China. You know, um, you know, we switch. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was playing around. I was playing around this this uh, yesterday. Um, I came up. I came up with y'all were talking about how cold it was. Remember, y'all were talking about how cold it was in um in uh, oh. for the illegal immigrants. Let me play this for you. A mí me dijeron que este país era diferente, <laughs> pero no, 
Uh, As Karina Abando walks her son to school, she knows the clock is ticking. The 38-year-old migrant from Ecuador moved into the Rowe Hotel, now a New York City shelter, three weeks ago. She's not a migrant because she's not working. Let's, let's, let's go work. to New York and, and, and let's go there with no money. It'll be good. Exactly. exactly. What could go wrong? Yeah. Migrant, my friends, migrants work. They work out in the field. They work hard. They seasonal. aren't given. Yeah. I mean, this, this, and right, they're seasonal. They come She's twice a year. They come exactly. in planting season and harvest season. That's it. That's it. And guess what? They used to know their roles too. We're going over there. We're, yep. we're coming back home. Same yeah. ones. We come to the same farm. Yep. Yeah. Generation. Generationally. Yeah. I had guys, I had right wing conservative guys tell me our farm dies without them. Yep. Got to yep. have them. Got to have them. Had them since the beginning of the country. And uh, if, if the social workers from the set from the 60s and 70s saw what was happening today with these people coming here calling themselves migrant workers and they're pushing their babies up and down the street living in a hotel, they they our our, our side, our people, Americans would be pissed off. Go, but now she needs to find a new home. Hers is one of thousands of migrant families in New York shelter system that have been told they need to clear out and either reapply for shelter housing or find their own way in the coming weeks. Yo le dije a mi hijo que, que aproveche, aprovechen, disfruten el, el hotel que estamos un, con un techo ahorita porque ya nos van a mandar, ya nos van a mandar y, y vamos a estar ya en, a dormir en el tren o, o en la calle. Mayor Eric Adams' office says some families will receive a holiday reprieve, but no decision has been conveyed to many of the more than 3,000 families that have been issued notices so far. Anna Vasquez, a 22-year-old from Venezuela, is eight months pregnant. She recently received her notice to leave the Rowe Hotel by January 8th, less than two weeks after her baby is due. You don't have an, she says, we don't have an escape plan. Well, you had an escape, escape plan to get over here. So, the entire, I mean, that entire operation, every camera, every light, every word is to make you feel sorry for these freaking people. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for it. And that eight month old baby is going to become an American citizen yep. in 30 days. Sure will. Sure let's will. go to let's go to America with no money and no skills and can't even speak the language. It'll be great. And that's another thing. If you really want to go back, really talk about it, um, in the sixties and seventies, and probably I don't know about the early eighties, but I know it was in the seventies. These migrants didn't come over here pregnant like this. They come, like I said, they came over here to work, and they knew it was seasonal, and they knew that they were going back home. They and came, there was no government check. No. No, it was it was regular checks for their work that they did, but but it wasn't welfare, right? It wasn't welfare. They, they were out there in the hot sun. I, I I remember my dad taking us to a migrant farm or um, a migrant working thing, and I, I changed. I mean, I'm not gonna say it really changed me, but it made me focus on that. This isn't what I want to do when I grow up. Okay. Um, because when we were driving to where they lived, you know how um, you know how you're driving along the highway, you probably see it a whole lot more than um, Jay much. Um, but and again, it's probably country up there in Minnesota too. Um, you have long stalks of the corn and yeah. along the highways and stuff, and there's a road that separates that. So when you go in the back, if you go back farther enough in the sixties and seventies, if you go back farther enough, I'm talking about like a mile, mile and a half going all the way back there. They had um, a little setup where you could see where they're, where they lived. It was like a camp. Yeah. It was like a camp. Yeah. Ca little cabins, bunk houses. Cabins were made of like tin, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like, I mean, they weren't there for the winter. I tell you that it, it was usually you in the summer and the spring, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But um, well, I'm the summer in the fall or the spring in the fall, but either Land way, season and harvesting season, it, exactly. And it's like 
but when you rolled up there, it looked like the poorest place that you were ever seen. Almost like the third um third world that they came from. That's what it looked like. And it's like as you you as a kid, you see that. Now when we rolled up there, most of all the people were gone except for the, the women and the children that were there, but they were cooking because everybody's working. Back, right, because everybody was working. And you saw this and like, man, I, I can't live here. And, you know, I, mean, I could never grow up and do anything like this. You know, I got to I got to be better. That's that's as a kid. This woman is talking about she doesn't have an escape plan. She, she hadn't even worked yet. She's not a migrant. She hasn't even worked yet. You know, this is this is. Dejan, pues, no sé qué haríamos. No tenemos como un plan de escape si no podemos alquilar. Es, es difícil la situación. She knew that. Y más con un bebé. The first wave of New York's migrant families was expected to reach their 60-day shelter limit just days after Christmas. The city, overwhelmed by asylum seekers, has warned there's no guarantee they'll get to stay in the same shelter or even in the same part of the city. Those families are panicked. Like right New York. They could be hours from the closest school. See, look, this is a freaking agent. In. All of the services and the connections and the community that they've been building in the place where they currently are, all of that could Screw go Screw them. Send them home. Many families fear they will have to go through the same process as single adult migrants who line up in the early mornings to petition for a new shelter stay. Some are able to secure 30 more Sexual. days. Others cannot. We are here every day. People are here every day. Even if you get a shelter, it's for a short time, like 30 Guinea. days. It means you know what's crazy? Again, and I, and I keep going back to it. There are no fields for these people. <laughs> they're they are in the city. There are no fields for these people. These, I mean, you want to be migrants? Send them out to the fields. Send them out to the farms. Let me let me tell you what's going to happen here. This is why we have to remove these people. Every group of immigrants to this country, ethnic immigrants, starting with, I don't know if it's starting with, but let's start with the Jews from Europe. They came here. What did they do? They went to the, the, the inner city, the slums, the tenements. And what happened next? The Jewish mob. Next came the Irish. And what did they do? They went to Hell's Kitchen. You just showed a picture of Hell's Kitchen in New York. And they went there. And what came next? The Westies and the Irish mob. Then the Italians came. Need I say more? The same thing is going to happen with these people. You're going to have a group of people from Venezuela, and the strongest among them are going to rape the rest of them. And they're going to be the new organized crime in this country. Well, and I think these interviews, if you zoom out and you look at how fundamentally flawed things are in America right now. So we started where everybody at a certain age thought I need to produce. You know, you go back 100 years. I need to learn a skill. I need to learn how to build something or make something or do something. Or I will be an outcast from society. I will have no food, no shelter, nowhere to live. And then as we started building social safety nets, it was designed like, oh, you hit a rough patch. Let's get you back on your feet. Well, now they have become the, the they have become just this entitlement system that is so un-American and so broken. None of those people are here saying, you know what? I'm a plumber from New Guinea. God, I need to get a job plumbing. Right. You know what? Right. I can pick up trash. Yep. You know what? I can go work in the fields. I'm yep. bringing these skills to make your country better. Right. These people are coming to live for free because we've created and, uh, that society in America where yep. and if there's a bunch of Americans. I mean, go to a college and ask them, what are you going to do when you get out? There is no, I need to really produce for society so that society produces for me. There mm -hmm. is a, I got my degree. Who's going to pay me $150,000 a year to do this job? On my first year. On yeah. my first year, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there is no there is no concept of I need to produce for society. Yeah. And, and if you look, your goal should be how do you be a net producer to society? None of these people are trying to be net producers. They're just mm -hmm. consumers. And it's going to it's going to completely destroy this country. And, you know, the, the thing about it is and, and Wayne can attest to this. I didn't produce anything in my life. I worked in the United States military. That was my thing. That's right. what I that's what I produced. And I started out as an E1 yep. and I made it all the way to W4 and I was selected for W5. 
I think I got promoted like 12 or 13 times. Nice. You know, and then I see people come out here and they want everything right now because right they now. went to college because they're stupid. Yeah. You know, I, I would never hire any college grad. A college graduate to me is not educated. They're programmed. And that's, and that's well, why most businesses um, will most likely hire somebody that just got out of the military before they hire somebody. Well, they used to do that. I don't know about now, but they used to hire saying. people that came out of the military before they hire people that came out of college because you're getting an adult that came out of the military rather than a kid 100%. that came out of college. And that's, you know, that's, that's, um, that's something that they used well, to be. But, but and I got to disagree with something that Hutch said, Hutch did mm -hmm. produce something. Hutch produced national security in the military. Right. And that was a production. I mean, he went in there. They said, here's a skill set. So you learned how to fix stuff, how yeah, to they, do stuff, how to kill yeah. people. Like you had, you had skills that they taught you to be. <laughs> and they started, they started at the beginning too. Right. They, they taught you how to shave. This is your, knife. This is your gun. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here's how I make your bed. Get but I mean, you had to make fight. your bed. You had to keep your clothes right. Yeah. You had to keep your hair cut. Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had to Six I'm inches kidding. away. <laughs> I'm hoping eventually it fills in the front part, but I don't know. He came here with a little curl on the top. I was like, <laughs> oh, when I when I let it go, man, I have an afro. You guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'll I guess be the so. brother. I had one in the '70s. I had one in the Bozo the Clown afros. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I wear I wear a baseball hat that came out both sides. Oh yeah. <laughs> Giddy yeah, up. Uh, I see that. Let me, let me you, are not, you are not even going to sleep because every single day you are waiting for the guard to come to wake you up to tell you, listen, tomorrow you need to leave. You need to leave. Obando's 19-year-old yeah. son and his wife have already been forced to leave the Roe Hotel. On January 5th, she fears her and her two younger sons will meet the same fate. Como madre. Oh my God, go home. Me duele. You should not have come here. Exactly. You you come here. And and say, thank you. say thank you for us buying you that coat. David Martin, the Associated Press, New York. That yeah, kid's uh, too old to be in there anyway. Exactly. exactly. You ought to be walking. Well, and the reality of life is... There are only so many people we can afford to pay for to not produce for society. And I mean, th that's sad. That sounds heartless, but that's the truth. You know, so, you're right. And, and the government, the people are the ones that have to fix this. And let me just give an announcement uh, to those of you living in the inner city that are living on some kind of support or another. Uh, you can only have one open borders or a welfare state. So right. figure that out and figure out who's going to get screwed. Cause it's not going to be me. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's actually, I, I remember reading an article on that where it, you, and it, social security, for example, you only got social security when you paid into it and then it paid out you. And now we're giving money to people that didn't pay into it. Why is it collapsing? Because there's only so many people you can, there's only so much of other people's shit you can take to give to somebody else. You know, those people are going to quit contributing as much as they are because what's the point if you're just going to give it to somebody else? And you can't let an unlimited number of people in and give them free stuff. And that's the basic tenet of communism and why it fails. Right. It's because at some point in time, I realize whether I work or not, I'm getting the same thing. Right. And once people figure that out, the work stops. Here's the way. It, it's funny. I remember reading a, a college study. There was a professor who was a lefty and he said uh, he was going to teach everybody how great communism was. And he said, OK, everybody gets a communal score on their test or on their grade. And so then the first thing, like everybody got a B plus because like the hard people worked hard and then the slugs didn't do nothing. And then, and then the hard people are like, what do you mean I get a B plus? I work my ass off. And the guys that were lazy are like, this is great. And then the mm -hmm. next test, the average was a B minus, then a C plus, then a D. By the end of the class, everybody was failing because it turned out the slugs never wanted to do anything. And the mm -hmm. one people are like, why would I work my ass off? They either drop the class or whatever, you know, 
because in the military, in the military, you get a GI party doing some crazy stuff like that. And that's not food either. I know I'm negotiate from the podium, but can you tell the American people if there's any immigration policy that this White House is willing to talk about and, and is working on with Republicans? So I want to be really careful as negotiations happen. We don't want to do this in the public, right? It does not help the process. Why? Why don't you want to do it in the public? Because you don't want the American people to know what's going on. It doesn't help the process. Well, sure it would. If Americans knew what y'all were talking about, it would help us really amount uh, um, gather together and whoop some ass. Yeah. That's I mean, you, you know, I mean that's why that's why you don't want to do it in the public. I want to go back to something where you started the sh- that you started the show with Wayne. Mm-hmm. You started the show with a montage of a ruined man of Joe Biden, and he he couldn't get out of his own way. He couldn't put a thought together. Anybody who thinks he's running the show is foolish. Right. He's not capable of running the show. He's capable of two or three minute sound bites and then they take him back in the van. You know, th- that's the thing. We gotta we gotta start pointing this where it goes. And I don't know if it's Barack Obama. I think it is, but know. it's somebody else. Yeah. It's not that guy. Right. Or his wife. Yeah. Or his VP. Yeah, he's but, sick. Um like to be able to I, uh, um, anyway, to go after ISIS and prevent its re- re- re-emergence in, in both, anyway, our kids are going to be, and our grandkids are going to be, anyway. By the way, the program is still there. Go to, anyway, 2, 10, 12, 15, Pope stepping on them. There's a, it's black, anyway. Horrible, man. What a horrible family. And our media likes to run cover. You get all these influencers on the left saying he's great. Mm -hmm. You get CNN, MSNBC. But the world sees that, Joe Biden. Yep. Exactly. The average citizen does That's why the Chinese military is activated. That's why they're trying to fight in Israel. This whole thing. And and, and Roy left out one thing in his uh, analysis of World War II, pre-World War II. The Weimar Republic, where Germany's economy collapsed. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening here. And you look, because the, the lesson to take away from that is America yep. and the left is becoming Nazi Germany. Yep. Right. Not China. China always was that way. Well, it's, it's funny. us that are changing. It's <laughs> funny because if you think of all the bad things that are going on in the world, I mean, we're facing economic collapse. BRICS could. Is Self-inflicted. Very Self-inflicted. Right. Right. I mean, we've got three wars brewing that either one could take off tomorrow. And meanwhile, all of our federal agencies are weaponized, trying to track down somebody that wandered around the Capitol January 6th. Right. Like we're, out of munitions. we're out of munitions. Right. Yeah, we have no we're, weapons. Troop levels are at the lowest since World War II, I believe I saw. Yeah, but then they want to send the FBI to people's houses because of stuff that they posted on social media about not believing in the U.S. government. Or- After Lindsey Graham and the Republicans gave them a trillion dollars again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Did I mean, say- I hate to say it. Things are, you know, we started the show talking about what's it going to take or what are we going to do? Things mm-hmm. are going to get rough. I mean, I'm looking. Yeah. I was going back for the American Tribune guys. We we're working on a let's go back and remember all the stories from last year. And it's funny because almost none of those stories are resolved. And and I see a lot of them coming to the, a head in the next 12 months before the election. You know, every economic story is still just this bubble building. If you look at all the wars around the world, and I mean, think back to Chinese spy balloons. Really, would anybody be shocked if that somehow activated, if something goes hinky? And they lied about it. Millie lied about it. He concealed it. Right. You know, I mean, that doesn't really surprise me. But when you put everything else together, it's uh, it's frightening. Catherine, Catherine Hetridge, who is um, <laughs> we gotta who, we gotta have a Catherine Hetridge conversation. <laughs> who was who was on Fox News and now she's on CBS. Um, she she was very trustworthy on Fox News, um, uh, and some of the stuff that she has has come out and said 
you know, some people consider her um, somebody that is down the line when it comes to reporting. I don't know if y'all saw this, but let me. Oh, dark. Oh, yeah. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. Mm -hmm. This is a national security event with high impact. That's very hard to predict. Um, there are a number of cons uh, concerns that I have that factor into that. And not only this uh, sort of enduring heightened threat level that we're facing, uh, the wars in Israel, also Ukraine. And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Let me... <laughs> I don't want to burst your bubble, man. Let me translate that, though. Go in her purse and get out and see what CIA badge number hers is. Right. Uh -oh. That's what she's doing. She's speaking for them. Uh -oh. oh, but there's predictive programming. I mean, they're going to they're gonna pull the pin on something before. But somebody election. told her to get out there and say that. Oh, 100%. I saw her called Colonel Douglas McGregor a traitor at the beginning of the Ukraine war for telling the truth. Yep. Yeah, I um I was thinking I was thinking about McGregor. Uh I saw a couple of his videos where he was talking about that we might not have an election. I I, I mean I can't see us not having one. And I know and I know some people say that um that it's possible that we won't. I can't see us not having one because even in Eisenhower, he had four. And he look, won look, all of them. But look what they did in COVID though. But we still had an election in twenty. It wasn't though. It wasn't. That uh, you know what? We still had an election. The outcome was fixed, but there still was one. Yeah. There's there was still an act of one. Okay. So I mean, um, and 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 that's and and probably that's what they did during Eisenhower's four. But that he had. Think of think of. All right. I'm not discounting what she just said. I'm, well, I'm, I'm saying the way said, you said what she said no, in I know. another way. I know, but what I'm saying is the way you don't have an election is let some missiles rain down in New York. Well, that's different. We weren't under attack during Eisenhower. I know it is, and that's what she's saying. I mean, they're 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 putting all these things up there. It could be Iran. It could be China. It could be this. It could be that. It's going to be something. Yeah, it's gonna be something. I mean, and and either I mean, we've even said it on the show we don't know what's coming, but something's no, coming. I agree with that. Something it's funny because and it's gonna involve it's gonna involve the homeland, right? But right. it's funny you say that because I was working on my list. I, I was coming up with my top ten what things wouldn't shock me that would be the Black Swan event after we saw that, and Todd and I are working on on a project on it. I mean, Trump election interference. You know, they're going to throw the guy in jail. Who knows how that turns out? They're trying to throw him off the ballot. You have a large percentage of the population that disagrees with this. War in the Middle East, BRICS. Could, I mean, BRICS controls like 40%, 30% of the currency. A sleeper cell in a populated area. China, Taiwan activating, causing them to activate the police in Cuba or the spaces in, in America. Cyber attack, hadn't really thought about that as much, but how many power grids were infiltrated this last year and grids went down? I, I mean, it, Russia, Ukraine, who knows what's going to happen over there? Um, I mean, it's it. they're priming us for so many things. I'm not shocked if any one of those they pulled one the pin the on. One of the main things I didn't hear, but I'm sure that it, it's on your radar, um, on Sunday night, Biden hit at Iran. Oh um, yeah, yeah, Middle East war. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean that now that right there should be on the front of everything right now because <laughs> they they uh they've been really wanting to to start something there for a while too. Lindsey uh, Graham was so hot and bothered when he saw that he had to go find a Senate staffer 
He's like, come on, boy. This this is lighting my fire. I've been itching for that Ukraine war for or that Iran negotiations war. Negotiations are happening. Obviously, we're part of those negotiations with, uh, with the with the senators. We think it's going in the right direction. We want to make sure that we get to a bipartisan agreement. It's incredibly important. The president understands. He understands that we have to fix this immigration system. It has been broken for decades now, and so we have to do it's everything that we can ago. to fix that system. Yeah. And so we're going to have those conversations. And you're right, it's not just about funding, it's also about policy discussions that they're having. And so don't want to get ahead of it. And let's not forget, this is a president that has had uh, these types of negotiation or been part of these types of his team, certainly has been part of these types of negotiation, uh, negotiations for some in different, obviously in different, uh, in different subjects and legislation. So that has happened for, for uh, the last two, two almost. If Kaylee McEnany was up there or Sarah Huckabee, if Sarah Huckabee was up there and she had said that immigration has been broken for many years, if those two were up there, that media room would have said, but wait a minute, it was fixed before you got here. Media just let her just let her get away with just saying that without even any form of response back at her. To call her out. That's what we that's what we used to see growing up. We used to see the media fight back, ask a couple of questions, you know, the same thing that they did with Kaylee and 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 um, um Huckabee is what we used to see growing up. Now I know we didn't like it when we saw that happen with Kaylee and Sarah, and you know, we say, Yeah, well, uh, y'all wouldn't be doing it. Well, guess what? That's what they used to do, they used to do that. I mean, to Reagan, they they used to do that to to. I mean, they, remember Sam Donaldson? Sam Donaldson, oh looking, man, looking he like was, looking like Mr. Spock up there. <laughs> he he looked like that Muppet. He was terrible, man. He was you know, rude, rude, and loud. loud. Yeah, yeah. But man. I mean, the media understands they can't do that to the Biden administration. They can, they won't. No, they can't because they'll get they'll get cut off, Wayne. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I agree with you. That's I, the part yeah. that scares me the most about all this stuff. You know, with this immigration, you know, in your mind, you know that at some point the American people are going to start burning shit down over this. Right. You know that. You know that. The same mm -hmm. way with the tranny stuff. The same way with so many things going on right now. And when I when I think that way. I think, what do they know that I don't know? What's their plan? Right. If they're trying to piss me off to get me to go crazy, what's their plan? Right. There's 350 million of us. Right. What's the plan? Are they going to nuke us? Mm -hmm. Well, the the plan is, if not enough people do it, you get January 6th. But I'm saying this stuff, this immigration thing by itself, 8 million people, everybody's going to get touched by that. They got maps showing these people where to go. They got a fi they figured out how to infiltrate the whole country with these immigrants. And 8 million people is enough to do it. Well, and I mean, if you want to go conspiracy theory, let's just say communist China wanted to ruin the country without firing a shot. What's the easiest way to do it? Ship in millions of people that you're not going to reject. You know what I mean? That's going to create the system to collapse. It's funny, I watched that obama movie the leave nothing behind or leave everything you, behind yeah. i finally watched it this weekend really good and i mean not to spoil it for anybody but they lay out like just two or three basic things i, I mean it, get it, your if kids I were, to hate the country get your kids to hate the place well yeah it, and it's great but i mean I, it made me think if i were somebody that wanted to destroy america without firing a shot i just send them 10 million people in a year and then 10 yep. million next year and 10 million the year after that, yep. that they're yep. going to have to pay for that. I know they can't afford. And think about the planning process. We'll break all the stops. We'll break every law. We'll put people in prison for a hundred years. All we need is four years out of this brain dead dude. Yeah. Right. Four yeah. years. It'll go on its own. It, question. Do you think it's Okay. You saw what Obama did. Well, Obama, Pelosi, and Harry Reid. You saw what they did. And then Trump came 
to stop it. Yep. But you're seeing what's happening under Biden. Do you think what's happening under Biden is worse than what happened under Obama? I think it's just an extension. It's a continuation. Yeah. It's continuation, but is it worse? Because Well, they're closer to their goal. Right. Okay. Okay. I think the goal was there on day one of the Obama administration. Actually, the Clinton administration. Right. Okay. So, with you saying that it's a continuation, though, that means, okay, you saw what Trump was trying to do in his three and a half years in. He was trying to or at least that's how I take it. He's trying to take eight years of probably a presidency and, and condense it into three and a half years because when he first went in, excuse me, when he first went in, he was going in with a hammer. Even though he had a whole lot of leaks, he was going in with a hammer to stop what Obama did. Now, with what, with what Biden is doing, he's really going to have to have a major uh, double hammer because for, from what I'm seeing it's worked he, I mean uh, the, the, um, uh, uh, the, the record numbers that are coming across didn't even come across like that with Obama when I mean when Trump takes control in 2024 the country's going to be a whole lot different than what it was true. Under, under Obama think of the think right? of, yeah think, think of what Roy said these people went as far as trying to kill the American people with COVID. Right. I mean, they tried that. They wanted that to work. They lit that train on fire in East Palestine, Ohio. The government did that. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. look at all the different right. things, all the beef that's getting killed, the yeah. avian flu. They're yep. trying to kill us. All this stuff that's happening under Biden. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Um, Obama fundamental, wanted to fundamentally transform America into homosexuals and LGBT. But what is happening under Biden is almost the destruction, well, the continuing destruction of America from, 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 from a people standpoint. Yeah. And you, you from look a at people standpoint, for, for, for us, just like you said, the virus, uh, people dying. Uh, um, the the uh, these people coming across the border, the um, the the food that you're talking about, the chickens that didn't eat, you remember for months. Yeah, everybody was wondering why why the chickens because they, they the eggs. because they messed up the feed. Sure they messed they up did. the feed. It's funny how far this stuff has evolved because I remember people, you know, when I first became really politically activated was Obama term two. I was working in corporate America and I was going into these nonprofits that we worked with in the communities. And every time it was a conservative one, they were getting audited by some other agency. And every time I was in a liberal one, they were completely skated. Like they hadn't been audited for years. And now you extrapolate that out this year, like they're canceling companies, folks like you and I from PayPal. And it's gone. So they're trying to lock up President Trump. They're trying to destroy his business. And I remember I was annoyed just because they were getting audited, you know, 10, 12 years ago. Now it's like they don't even try. I mean, would you be shocked if you get an if any of the three of us get an IRS notification that they're going to audit us shut up, and shut go up, through Joe. all of our. No, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so up, Jay. <laughs> I'm just saying that's reality. But you know what? The lefties, they aren't going through that. They've complete. And it's normal. Well, all these charges for President Trump. Hold on. Nobody, Hold on. people say, aren't up in arms and people think that's normal. It's just not You normal. saying that the lefties don't go to it? I don't know. The report just came out that the IRS just got, uh, what, four to five trillion dollars uh, from um, from their programs and stuff like that. The IRS did it through their audits and stuff. I don't think that was just conservatives, man. No, no, no. I'm just saying if you look at... And that was allegedly, if, too. First yeah, off, if you have a... If you have a small group like us, a small media organization, do you think one supporting the Democrat candidates are more likely to get their PayPal shut, shut off or us? I don't think, no. I, I think it's us because we're a whole lot more boisterous about uh, what's going on uh, against us right. than they are. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm, I think but, the whole the whole federal government and a lot of state governments like Colorado have, have been weaponized uh, against the right, against anything but the left. Right. Yeah. You know, so y- y- you put that in perspective. Because, because we yell louder. We're the only thing in the way. Yeah, exactly. Here's, um, before we go, this is current, whatever it is. Oh, flow to get to the root causes of migration. We believe that uh, we've done a good job working with uh, our partners in the region to try to get at some of the root causes, including political instability uh, and crime. There is more that needs to be done. And I think it's important, again, as I said earlier, to keep this in perspective. You are seeing more people on the move for a variety of reasons uh, across in this hemisphere than since World War II. I mean, it's a historic level of migration. And there's a lot of reasons for it. And we're not the only country that's facing this flow. Uh, So it's back to the question about alliances and partnerships. A a way to get at this is to work with uh, neighboring nations to try to get at these root causes at the same time, uh, working on our own information. Other countries ain't going through this. Other countries not going through this. No, they went through it 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but that, but that's, well, other countries, Things were happening in other countries too. I mean, people were doing a whole lot of shooting and stuff for them to go across the border. That's not happening down at the southern border. They they're getting a bushel and a a, a, um, a basket of goods and nine thousand dollars on a monthly thing for like uh, for six or seven months. Here's a um, million jobs like- have been created under President Biden. That's every job lost in the pandemic plus almost 15 million more jobs oh my god nobody even cares man i mean no nobody cares nobody checks these people at all 15 million jobs really fact 15 check million jobs. <laughs> 15 million jobs but man, i can't believe they still have her on the payroll man i can't i can't believe that well the media runs cover for her i mean go back and watch a a Kaylee McEnany press conference, even pre COVID and watch how they attacked her, you know, just Google any article too. from 2017. I mean, it's yeah. insane. That's what I'm saying too. I mean, and believe me, I am not sticking up for Kaylee after some of the stuff she's been doing lately, but uh, I mean, any, I have to say anybody that stands up there on that podium is not 100% telling the truth. They can't because the people Above them, and you're talking about the president, the people above them won't let the truth come out from that podium. Now, the only person I know that would tell the truth from that podium is Donald Trump. That's the only person I know that would get up there and he'd do it, he'd do it for 45 minutes, too. Yes, right. yes, he's the only one that will do that. That's why that's the main reason why they don't want him in office because he will tell. He took it took everything for him to say uh who didn't spy on him on that Saturday morning. He said they spied on me. He wasn't supposed to do that. Tap but, my phone. <laughs> we wake up, we look at the Twitter thing, you're like, what what happened? What happened? <laughs> they spied on me during the campaign. They, 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 they listened on the phone calls. <gasps> he wasn't supposed to do that. They weren't supposed to let him do that. But um, for some reason, I, 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 you know, they they think we can't. Damn, <laughs> Lindy, true. Lindy's rough. You know, they think we can't. <laughs> Who me? <laughs> no, no, no. She's talking about the Biden administration. All right, Lindy. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thank you, doll, baby. <laughs> like, wait a you minute. You know, what it's funny you say that too, Wayne, about <laughs> about the Trump stuff. And I dig into all these court case stuff. In his January 6th case, there was just a motion filed today since they can't get it delayed. They want to prevent him yeah. from presenting information about January 6th, subpoena information. Mm-hmm. So he's going to trial about January 6th, and they're trying to prevent him from being able to present evidence about, because his argument will be is that this is this was a protest, a riot that they intentionally let get out of control with the planning. They won't even let him talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, believe me, they anyway, and that's how they're going to 
No, I, see, <laughs> we got to get ready to go. Tom, tom, tomorrow will be our last broadcast for the year. But, um, Jay, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I can't see them putting him in jail. If, if they put him in jail, it's going to burn. And I ain't talking about the jail's going to burn. The country's going to burn. Yeah, I don't see them putting him in jail. I I see him appealing the verdict. I, I can't see them putting him in jail. I can see them. You know what we said last year, this year, this year when we were talking about it, uh, they're going to come with a plea deal type of thing. And it's up to him. He's no. going to take it. Exactly. And so, but I still can't see them putting him in jail. I can't. 24 Dude. months ago, could you have seen him facing 91 felony charges? Yes. I just can't see him putting him in jail. I, I can see the felony charges. I can see him beating the felony charge. I just can't see him in jail. I can't. I can't. My, my, my mind can't go there. My mind can't say Donald Trump behind bars. I, I can't see it. They just and took him off the ballot in Colorado. I saw. Now that, I kind of figured that they would. Try, that's the worst that my mind will go to is taking him off the ballot. I can't see them killing him. I can't see them. put Because if you do the killing or to put him in jail, you are literally destroying the country. You know, the last time they took a candidate off the ballot. When Lincoln. they took Abraham Lincoln off in slave States, the Democrat party hasn't changed. He still won too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Then they whacked him. And then they killed him, right? Well, imagine the violence and protest. And <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Imagine the violence and protest in the first Trump presidency, even before all the COVID stuff. I remember that. I remember yeah. it happened uh, right on inauguration day. Inauguration day, they were burned in that cars. Evening, I, remember, I remember. I mean, Starbucks. remember Bunker Boy? That was the bricks were out. The pallets of bricks. Yeah. 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 I mean, you. It's funny. I I completely am pessimistic. Here's here's the question: If Trump doesn't stop, they're just going to keep ratcheting up. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. We're going to have to. Here's the thing: we we've sat the last five or six of these things out. One of these days, we're going to have to engage, or it's going to keep happening. It's like the it's like the bully on the schoolyard. Right. 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 Yeah, I mean, think Sometimes. of the January 6th people. Who would have thought that they'd still be arresting people three years later? Like, more people have gone to jail from for January 6th than, than the Epstein client list. Pray for Clay Higgins. Right. Clay Higgins is one of the few people that I think is real. Right. And I'm oh, yeah. not sure. I'm not sure. But I think he is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, I would trust Clay Higgins over anybody that's up there right now, oh, in the house, in the house, in the house. Um, because I mean, we watched him, we watched him before he even got in the house, and he and he was doing the work he's of the never. Lord. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was he, doing the work of the Lord, man. So. He, he he did an interview, like a forty-five minute interview. I think how long it was with uh, Laurie Logan. I think Laura Logan. Mm -hmm. Man, was that an explosive interview? Well, you know, I mean, when people like that speak, you can hear them speak from their heart. Yeah. And they've thought it out really great about things. And those are who you call patriots. Okay. That, that, I mean, um, uh, Higgins doesn't look like anybody that had the world given to him on a silver platter. Doesn't look like his daddy was um, the rich person in the neighborhood. He looked like he worked for everything that he got, and he and, and now he's in Congress. He's trying to make a a difference and hope hope the guy that um, Trump sees him and makes him DOJ. You know how you can tell. Can you imagine at, him as DOJ. Look at how he's dressed. Yeah, he's yeah, proud yeah, of no. his he's he, Exactly, exactly. He's an American man. All I need is the penguin back and the, and the medals up here, the, yeah, and the sash going across here like that. <coughs> the, uh, cover, the cover bund. Cover bund. Yeah. Cover bund. Cover bund. Yeah. Sure that. Okay. Let's making cover buns great again. <laughs> we got to go, but we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is our Friday or Thursday. 
And you know that we're off on uh, Friday. And we're also going to be off on Tuesday, but we'll be back. And I will announce this on tomorrow too, but uh, we'll be off the day after New Year's, but then we'll be on Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday of next gotcha. week. So. Yeah. Got it. So, got it um, this time. Got it this time. Yeah, you got it this time. So no first, no second. Right. I mean, we'll if, you want to the first, if you want to do the first, Jay, we can do the first for you. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll meet you. It's, it's gonna be a little earlier show we'll meet you 7 a.m right here there you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly right right yeah. see i get up at five huts that doesn't work <laughs> eastern time oh there you go <laughs> before and before i let these guys um do their um last sauce for the day listen we have an app i gotta get better next year in telling you all the things that we do have but we have an app and if you download the app and click on the menu, you can send us a question. I will play the question here on the show. We will play the question if you have a response, if you have a question, you have a um, concern, leave it. We'll play it. We, we will answer it right here on the show for you. Okay, we'll, we'll light that thing up. We have a little segment where... We um, take care of those questions for you. You can ask one of us. You can ask all three of us. Um, and, you know, that's that's a little something different for 2024. Uh, I'm going to tell you, things don't change in 2024. I'm, I'm out here. For real. I mean. I, Aren't we doing the even... cooking show then? Yep. Okay. Straight. Straight that cooking show and, uh, um, and, a, and, and a night. uh um, a nightly gospel, uh, old time gospel radio hour, something like that. Yeah, that's right. Cause I'm done, man. I mean, if y'all, if we don't get it, if we don't get it, I'm gone. I seriously, I got, I've been on this earth 55 years, <laughs> 55. I'm tired. I am. I'm tired. I mean, I want to see people get smarter, not dumber. And the way the way I'm seeing these TVs, that I, I will say this: on Thanksgiving and Christmas, I pulled myself away from the politic type of stuff, and I just enjoyed family, man. I just enjoyed family. That I mean, and I'm sorry, sorry guys. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we have a text thing that goes back and forth. Uh, I saw their food. I was like, okay. I'll talk to them a little bit later. I got to sit down here and relax a little bit. But we back on the food again now. We back on the food. So, <laughs> but uh, okay. So, with that said, Jay, give me some last. <laughs> Harry J, give me some last. Um, uh, uh, Man, that toupee up there is working for you, boy. I'm telling you. It's not quite a toupee yet. Otherwise, I'd have it fill in that top part. <laughs> and my wife was giving me shit. She's like, aren't you going to get a haircut for Christmas pictures? <laughs> I'm like, no. Should I? Not only am I a recipient, I am the president. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, change your background so your bald spot doesn't ma match in with it. I'm like, come on, this is savage. A little, little, ta little talcum, talcum powder or something. <laughs> right. I saw the first thing where we got on there. I was like, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can wear a hat. I mean, I can go hat too. Like, see, see, there we go. There, there we go. go. Yeah, there we go. Ugh. All right. Last starts, uh, J Rob, and then we're going to go to the Godfather Hutch Bailey Jr. And then we're getting ready to ro roll up. Out Don't forget also to subscribe, whatever platform that you're watching. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed what we're talking about and how we're talking about it. And uh, if you have any questions, again, download the app. It's It's free. You can leave us a voicemail, we'll get it. And we will definitely answer you on the show. We will, if you want us, uh, mention your name if you want, or mention just uh, where you're calling from. I'm calling from Kentucky. I'm calling from New Zealand. I'm calling from England. And let us know your question, and we will answer it 
right here on the show. All right. You can um, you see the thing right there. We're in the app store. We're there for you. Uh, um, go, Jay. I was going to say, folks, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas, had a lot of time with friends and family. I'm going to encourage everybody to enjoy between now and the new year, especially really reconnect with with those people in your life, because that's important. Because I, I hate to say it, I, I think the next 10, 12 months between January and the election, it things are going to get wild, folks. Things And it's it's remarkable. It makes me really feel that way. As I, I mentioned, I was looking back at stories from the year, and you just look at how much things have escalated in 12 months. And you extrapolate that where the powers that be are really afraid of 2024's election, and they're going to do anything they can to control what happens so it's going to be wild but the reason you fight the fight is for those people you love so that's why it's important to really connect with those folks as we're uh as we're approaching the end of the year so with that we'll see everybody tomorrow Hutch. all right uh i want to thank the wayne dupree podcast for another hell of a year i appreciate that you guys uh nice operation going on here um solidar Bakhmut, Korimov, and Maryinka. These are the settlements that were conquered by Russia in 2023 as the war of attrition intensifies. See you tomorrow, folks. See you tomorrow.